Okay, let's have a conversation about cartridges for scout rifles versus cartridges for general purpose rifles. Most people say caliber, but that's not correct as my friend Richard Mann will very clearly tell you if he ever gets the opportunity. Cartridges. What is the best cartridge for a scout rifle? If you ask anyone in the scout rifle community, they will very quickly tell you 308. Almost all of them will tell you 308 is the only choice. And there's some people that are that are starting to look at some other things, but honestly, the it goes back to what Colonel Cooper wrote about years ago. Everything that he said about the 308 still makes a huge amount of sense, and it still applies today. The 308 is a cartridge that can take basically any game up to a thousand pounds out to the distance at which a scout rifle is intended to be used, which I've covered this on videos before, and that's about 300 yards. Yeah, it'll go longer than that, but that's really its wheelhouse, and it'll do a great job at that. But that wasn't the only reason that Colonel Cooper decided that the 308 made the most sense. It also had to do with ammo availability. The fact that you could go into anywhere that sells ammo and find it, whether you are in the United States or Africa or Europe or Canada, you can even get them in California. So the 308 is universal and that universality is a big deal. But there's more to it than that even. And that is because the scout rifle is not just a hunting rifle. It is a rifle that is expected to do everything that a rifle could be expected to do within its range. And that includes not just hunting, but warfare. Anytime, you know, if you're talking about that lone gunman, the, the, ava the availability of the military surplus ammo comes into play. Military surplus ammo, you can buy for cheap. You can buy it by the case. And you should be buying it by the case because you should be running through it. You should be taking training classes. A good training class, you're going to go through five, 600 rounds of ammunition. And military surplus 308, it's out there and you should stock up on it. So for a scout rifle, that is what makes the most sense. Now, in some jurisdictions, Cooper realized that you couldn't get 308, so he made accommodations for the 7mm 08. And for the recoil sensitive, he talked about the 243. But lately, the 6.5 Creedmoor has really come into play. And the 6.5 Creedmoor, you can make a strong argument because anywhere that you can find 308 ammunition, you can also find 6.5 Creedmoor. They're out there. Uh, but the military surplus market doesn't really exist for this thing. So the cheapest ammo I've been able to find lately is about 80 cents a round for 6.5 Creedmoor. And it's some junky stuff that reviews on it aren't great, but it's out there. Match grade ammo is gonna run you a pretty penny. It's still fairly expensive. But what if we go beyond the scout rifle? What if we expand out into this general purpose category that I've been talking about? That's where things kind of change because what you need to accomplish is different because it goes out beyond 300 yards. Out the 300 yards, these are gonna work pretty much the same. Uh, the ballistics of them, everything else, one will do what the other will do. It's not a huge difference. So in that regard, it really comes down to price of ammunition and the 308 wins there. But what about when you go to longer ranges? At longer ranges, things change. The 308 is known as a gun that can realistically stretch out to about 800 yards. That six to 800 yards is really its wheelhouse. Beyond there, the bullet drops subsonic, things just don't go as well. Um, but you can shoot it out to a thousand yards. And if you take it out to a thousand yards, you're gonna discover something about it. And that is recoil becomes an issue. Now for you scout rifle guys, you might hear that and say, dude, a 308 doesn't recoil that bad. What are you, a wimp? 
Well, no, and I agree. I've taken scout rifle classes where, you know, we shot 600 rounds in a matter of three days. It doesn't hurt. My shoulder wasn't bruised, I wasn't pummeled, and I wasn't flinching from it. But that's because most of the shots were taken from either standing, sitting, kneeling, very few from prone, and I didn't need to see my bullet impacts. Well, when you go out to longer ranges, you do need to see your bullet impact. That's critical. You need to see what the wind is doing to you. And if you are looking through your scope and you press the trigger and gun recoils, if you can get back on target and see where that impact is, you can say, oh, the wind blew me a lot further off than I thought it was. I, I had a bad wind call. I need to correct for that. Well, you don't know that unless you can see your impacts. So a lighter recoiling rifle makes a big difference. And that's one of the reasons why the long range shooters are out there with, you know, 20 pound rifles. But it's also where the 6.5 Creedmoor comes in because it's still gonna recoil, but it recoils less than that 308. And that is going to allow you to see your impacts better. You also get into the effects of wind. You know, at 300 yards, who cares? It's not a big enough difference. 500 yards, not a tremendous difference. You're starting to see some. But once you get out to those longer ranges, the wind is going to affect your 308 a lot more than the 6.5. One other thing, and that has to do with bullet drop. So look at a ballistics chart. A 308 at 1,000 yards, if you want to go out to 1,000 yards, a 308 you're gonna to have to dial 41 to 43 MOA, depending on a few things. So you dial that much elevation into your scope. A 6.5 Creedmoor, you're gonna to have to do 33 to 36 MOA. Well, you might look at that and say, well, who cares? You can, if you're dialing 33, you can dial 43. So big deal, gotta dial it anyway. Uh, however, there are scopes out there that can't dial that much. Loophole, I'm looking at you. There are CDS turrets, uh, the, the mid-range ones, only allow you a little less than two turns. That's about 38 MOA. That won't get you to 1,000 yards with a 308. It'll get you over 800, which is probably the best range for a 308 anyway, but it won't get you to 1,000. It will get you to a thousand with the 6.5 Creedmoor. So you get, you buy yourself some versatility of the optics when you switch down to that 6.5 Creedmoor. When this cartridge came out, I laughed. I, I just didn't understand the point. Um, and it wasn't until I really started exploring and I've had to eat some crow on this one because honestly, the 6.5 Creedmoor makes a ton of sense as a general purpose rifle cartridge. And I've come around to that. I still have my 308. I still shoot my 308. I still am very, very happy with this thing. But at some point here, I need to pick myself up a 6.5 Creedmoor. I hope this has been helpful. And if it has, I would encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and share this video. And I hope to have some really interesting news coming up about 6.5s and me eating some more crow with regard to the SIG Cross. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.